my two co-moderators here. I've got Daphne, who will be handling um, the questions in the room and online. And I've also got Mariko, who will be your timekeeper. Um, so this session will be recorded for later viewing by registrants. So just keep in mind to please speak uh, slowly and enunciate for people online and in person um, to be able to hear you. Each presenter will present for 10 minutes um, with three minutes for questions. 15, yes, 15 total total minutes. Um, but then we will also, so Mariko will hold up a one just um, at, at the nine minute mark. At the nine minute mark to just uh, let you guys know what the what the time <laughs> what the timing is. Um, if you're attending the session in person, please use the microphone to ask your questions. Um, please go ahead and introduce yourself uh, when we pass that mic around so that the online people know um, who is speaking. Um, if you are online, please go ahead and make use of the Zoho um, questions question function um, to ask your questions. We will also be moderating the Slack channel as well because there is a specific Slack channel for this session. Um, so go ahead and post your questions on either of those and we will be moderating both. Um, of course, by participating in this, you agree to the code of conduct and please bear with us with any technical difficulties we may have. With that said, our first speaker is the wonderful Nicole Kearney from BHL Australia and today she'll be talking about uh, celebrating BHL Australia through the eye of the Tasmanian tiger. Hey everyone, it's lovely to be here. So I'm Nicole Carney and before I begin, I would like to acknowledge the first peoples of every part of Australia. I run a national project and that acknowledgement is generally missing from the material that I work with. Material such as this, awesome. Um, these are all illustrations that are taken from the very first published descriptions of Australian species. You can see from the dates that they come from a time when these animals and plants were being discovered for the first time by Europeans. The text that accompanies these illustrations very rarely contains any acknowledgement that there were already a people on these lands who had an extensive knowledge of both the biology and behavior of these species. There. Awesome. I usually speak at Tadwick about digital object identifiers or DOIs. In fact, every year for the past five years, I've spoken at Tadwick about the efforts that the Biodiversity Heritage Library is making to assign digital object identifiers to the historic literature that we have on, D on BHL. And our efforts to bring to use those DOIs to bring that historic literature into the modern linked network of scholarly research and how using DOIs, should I just say next? Is that going to work better for you? <laughs> next. Um, and how via DOIs we're able to make historic literature accessible that's behind paywalls on websites elsewhere. Next. But here, um, assigning DOIs to historic literature is only a very small part of what I do for the Biodiversity Heritage Library. When I'm not doing that, I manage BHL Australia. And in celebration of Tadwig being in Australia this year, I would like to talk and celebrate the work and the achievements of BHL Australia. Next. And next again. Ellie Wallace has just walked into the room. Uh, BHL Australia was started by Ellie Wallace in 2010. <coughs> Uh, it's nationally funded, next, by the Atlas of Living Australia, next. And we began operation with just one organisation, the Museums Victoria in Melbourne, next. Museums Victoria is the largest museum organisation in the Southern Hemisphere with an incredibly impressive suite of venues, next. But this is our library. And I use this photograph a lot when I'm talking about the Biodiversity Heritage Library because for me, it really captures why the global project exists. Like most museum libraries and herbaria libraries around the world, the Museums Victoria Library is closed to the public and its resources are hidden away behind the scenes behind these closed doors. Next. But behind these doors are incredible treasures. They include our wonderful librarians and an impressive collection of rare books and historic journals. Next. The Museums Victoria Library was established in 1855 as a working resource for the museum's uh, curators. 
And it's an incredibly impressive and significant collection. Over the last 170 years, it's evolved into one of the most important natural history collections of of literature in Australia with over 40,000 titles. Through those titles, next, you can track the descriptions of thylacines throughout time. This publication is our fifth most viewed book in the BHL Australia collection. It's Paul Gervais's Atlas of Zoology from 1844. Next. And here's another thylacine description by George Robert Waterhouse. Sharing the spotlight there with this rather fat thylacine is the yapok or the water opossum, not an Australian species. Next. Next. So we have a digitization lab at the Melbourne Museum. Ellie Wallace still is a very large part of our operation. She continues to champion the project today in her role with Atlas Living Australia. And on the left is our real digitization technician, uh, who's relatively recent joining. Uh, that's Jack Eastor. Next. We also have a library data officer, Marina Hunt, and the most incredible team of volunteers who do a lot of our digitization, cropping, post-processing, and the really important work of adding metadata to the content we put online. Next. I joined the project in 2014. By then, the project had grown to include four organizations. We'd been joined by the Australian Museum, the South Australian Museum, and the Queensland Museum. Next. All of these organizations were located in the southeastern part of mainland Australia. And next, they focused, as far as biodiversity was concerned, on zoology and paleontology. Next. So we were missing plants. So when I first started, a huge part of my role was to try and increase our breadth, both taxonomically and geographically. Next. So I contacted the natural history organisations and publishers across Australia to encourage them to contribute their biodiversity literature to our online collection. We now have 44 organisations across the country. So we're now a truly national organisation representing every state and territory. And these organisations include our state libraries, our state museums, the, the state herbaria, Royal Societies, Natural History Societies and many other publishers and natural history societies. Next. Yeah, some of the transitions have gone a bit screwy. Uh, many of these organisations have not had the resources to do this work themselves. As I mentioned, we're nationally funded by the Arts of Living Australia and that funding covers our costs of digitisation, post-processing, uh, upload and website wrangling. Next. And this national consortium model that we've set up here in Australia is really unusual across the BHL community globally. Most BHL operations digitise material on behalf of their own organisation and that's it. So this national funding that we receive from the Arts of Living Australia makes BHL Australia really very special. So thanks to the ALA. Next. So my desk often looks like this, covered in library materials cut, sent to us from around Australia. Most of what we receive in the post are journals, but we're really proud to be able to make this bread and butter of our project, this foundation of our understanding of biodiversity, freely accessible online. Next. But we do have some very old journals online. This is one of the earliest. This is the first volume of the Australian Museum Memoir, a description of a sperm whale from 1851. Next. And some of our organisations elect to personally deliver material to us in Melbourne or to courier material to us. So we've just finished digitising a really significant collection of field diaries and correspondence from the Queensland Museum archives that was sent to us by a professional art courier. Next. And some of our organisations are really quite well resourced and have their own digitisation operations. So these lovely librarians are from the State Library of New South Wales. They've sent us already digitised versions of their incredible treasures. Next including this one. So this is The Birds of New South Wales by John Lewin. It is the very first illustrated book ever to be published in Australia. Next. And next. Um, this particular species is now known as the Lewin's honey eater, named in honour of John Lewin. Next. And there are only 13 copies in the world that survive of this particular publication. Next. Four of them are in the State Library of New South Wales collection. They're all quite different, those four copies that they have. So we've digitised all of them and put them all on BHL, or they've digitised them. Next. John Lewin's also known for his illustrations of thylacines. So this, he was the, next, he was the first official government illustrator for the colony of New South Wales. And this is one of the very oldest surviving paintings of a thylacine from 1809. Next. But not all of our organisations have their own digitisation operations. In fact, very few of them do, um, which makes it very hard for us to get some of their historic and rare publications onto BHL, unless they live in our own city. 
Uh, so Ellie and I in 2015 and 16 moved our entire BHL operation across the city, our staff, our volunteers and our equipment to the to the National Herbarium at the, at the Royal Botanic Gardens in Melbourne. And we were there for five months. We had a summer sabbatical in the gardens. Next. And while we were there, we digitised a significant portion of their historic journal collection. Next. And also their rare books. This is one of the most significant publications we've uploaded onto BHL. It is the oldest contribution to BHL by an Australian organisation, a voyage to New Holland or Australia, uh, in the year 1699. Next. And this is hugely significant. It is the very first publication globally to contain illustrations of Australian plants. Next. But we don't just put old stuff onto BHL. We also upload very recently published material. So this is the most recent uh, issue of the Geelong Naturalist published in June this year. Uh, many of our organisations have given us permission to upload from volume one all the way through to their current issue. And many of us, many of them send us their born digital publications at the point of publication for us to upload onto BHL. So we have a lot of very recently published material. It's another thing that makes BHL special. Uh, sorry, BHL Australia special. BHL is very special. Next. Um, I really want to highlight this journal. This is the in-house journal of the Tasmanian Museum and Art Gallery just across the road. Um, it's very special to me. It's also a very recent one, but the name Kanuna is the local Indigenous name for the thylacine. Next. So why do these organisations want to have their content on BHL? Well, obviously because we're the world's largest virtual library of biodiversity literature and archival material with more than 61 million pages now freely accessible online. Next. And those millions of pages are accessed by millions of users. Since the BHL began operation in 2006, globally we've had over 14 million users access the website from over 240 countries and territories across the globe. Next. But we don't just make content accessible, just next. We also make that content truly discoverable. So this is a very special journal article. Is next going to work? Next, Just go next again. Next. I don't know why that other text isn't coming up. Next. And again. It works on my computer. Um, so this is very special to me. This is the very first published description of the thylacine. Uh, it also includes the very first published description of the Tasmanian devil. Um, and that piece of uh, literature, that name was that Harris, the author, gave the thylacine, Didelphus thynocephala, is one of 233 million taxonomic names across BHL. Um, next. How do we know how many taxonomic names are on BHL? Because BHL is clever. Every single page on BHL has a show text button. Click. Sorry, next. <laughs> if you click, <laughs> click, click. Um, every page has OCR generated for it. If you, um, if you click on that button, it'll give you the OCR. Next. Um, that optical character recognition can be read by people, but also by machines. Next. Um, and next. Next. All right. Every it basically it's a it's a, a version of taxonomic name recognition. Every it matches when it finds a match of a of a name that's in our accepted list of global names. It pulls it out onto the left hand side there. That in red is uh, the name that I gave the thylacine. If you click on that, next. Sorry, <laughs> you'll get a list of that name in all the taxonomic taxonomic databases. It appears next. There's a drop down menu gives you all the related names. That's the currently accepted name for the thylacine highlighted next. If you search for that currently accepted scientific name across BHL, next, you'll get 1,263 mentions of that name across all 61 million pages in the BHL website. Next. Uh, we also just keep going. Next, 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 all the way to the bottom until something in red appears. Down, 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 down. Excellent. Nope, back. So we also... We also have full text search. This was a game changer when it came to discoverability for me. Introduced in 2018, it was like getting the key to the biggest treasure chest ever. Allowed you to search not just for taxonomic names, but for common names, people names, indigenous names, place names. You can filter by author date, contributor, and published publication. The names I really like looking for or the words I like looking for are words like favourite, delicious, wondrous, disastrous. Filter them by your favourite author. Find out where Alfred Russell Wallace had a disaster in his adventures around the world. It's really a cool thing to do. Spend your afternoons doing that. You can also search for phrases, the Tasmanian tiger, next. If you search for the phrase the native tiger in BHL, next, you'll get 69 mentions of that across the whole of the BHL website with a little preview of where that text appears. Next. This... Um, I'm going to have to come down to read this. This is the description by John Gould um, where he gave us a warning in 1863 about how the fastness of the Tasmanian forests and gullies were going to protect 
the thylacine for the moment, um, but it wasn't going to protect it for very long. Um, and here he says that this animal is doomed, basically. I won't read it. Next. 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 Um, these taxonomic name recognition uh, discoverability tools make BHL an incredibly useful resource for researchers um, and for people like yourselves, which allows you to build on that knowledge today. Next. But my true uh, discoverability test is whether you can find it by the tools that most people use to find stuff online. So if you search for the taxonomic for the ta for the Tasmanian tiger on Google, next, the first thing you'll get is Wikipedia. Next, the Wikipedia page for the thylacine is quite extensive. If you scroll down to the bottom, you'll get, sorry, next, you get 170 citations. If you click on those 100, oh, sorry, just on that first page of citations, eight out of 11 of them from, from BHL. So that proves that this is where the people who are looking for the information we look for are finding their information. Next. So that's what we do in BHL Australia and BHL uh, globally is we make content accessible, discoverable, and we allow people to build on it today. Next one. I just want to finish with this slide. It's one of my favourites. Next. Next. It is the 2009 Tasmanian Field Naturalist Club's Easter camp. It's a picture of the ladies' tent. So these are the contributions made by the women in 2009 in the Freycinet National Park here. If you haven't been to Freycinet, it's one of the most beautiful parts of Tasmania. It's still clothed in impenetrable forests that Gould talked about. If you go there, you may just see a thylacine. Next. Thank you very much for listening. If you're not an organisation contributing already to BHL or if you want to make add DOIs to your content, please come and talk to me. Thank you. Awesome. awesome. Thank you so much. Um, so just for the interest of time, we're going to move on to the next speaker. But if you have any questions, again, please feel free to throw them in the Slack 